Hey guys, Cowbell here. Today we're going to be doing a follow-up to my level 4 mission guide. Uh, a lot of things have changed in EVE Online, so I just wanted to discuss a few of those changes as well as um, talk a little bit about some of the questions you guys have been sending me. So hopefully I can address everything. If I miss something by chance, feel free to leave a comment below. Uh, first thing first, we're going to talk about the skills and implants that I'm using. Now, this is a skill-based game, so of course the, the higher your skills are, the more DPS you're going to do. A lot of people have been asking, well, hey, I simulate uh, the ship, the fit, but it doesn't do anywhere near what DPS you have. Uh, my skills are pretty high, definitely not as high as the top tier uh, people in the game, but I have about 53 million skill points, which again, um, gets the job done for what I'm doing. Now, the main ship uh, is probably going to be a tier 1 battleship, the first ship that you're going to get into. It's going to be the R&I. So what you're going to want to train is, of course, Caldari battleships. That's where they get their bonus. Every little bit you add is going to give you that little bit of DPS. Now the second ship that you're going to go to next in progression, probably going to be either the Gila or it's going to be the Rattlesnake. Uh, I would probably suggest going for the Rattlesnake, and if we hover over it, uh, you're going to want Galante Battleship as well. And that adds a bonus to kinetic and thermal damage, which again is huge. Uh, if we're talking level 5, that's 50% extra damage. So uh, make sure you look at what skills you need for the ship that you're going to be flying. And then the end goal, I am flying a Golem, which is a tier 2 uh, Caldari Battleship. It's this guy right here. And for that, it's going to be Caldari Battleship level 5. You have to be level 5 to fly this. And then also every level you add to Marauders adds that little bit of extra DPS. And in terms of the actual skills that you're going to want, uh, we're going to be focused on missiles. Uh, we're, most of my fits are missile fits. So you're going to want to train what you're going to be shooting. So definitely try to get that Cruise Missile 5. You're going to want to get the cruise missile specialization. You can see I'm still working on that. And then just all the other skills that go along with it. So uh, missile launcher operations, rapid launch, precision, any other skills that are going to help with the DPS. I say try to get them all to level 3 just to start out with. And then start picking away, going to level 4 and level 5 of the ones that do the big damage. So for example, this one right here, cruise missile, you get a 5% bonus for every skill level. Um, also, what you're going to want, if you're going to be flying either the Gila or the, the Rattlesnake, especially the Sniper Fit, you're also going to want to be skilling into drones. That's why the Rattlesnake is kind of a tough option, because a lot of its DPS comes from the drones. There are two different fits. There's a, a Missile Fit and a Drone Fit, but something to keep an eye out. The Gila also, as well, uh, focuses on the drone damage, so you'll have to go into some of these skills as well. In terms of what is on my character and for implants, uh, let's go here. Character, augmentations. I have just the level 3, the basics. Uh, you can do level 5 if, if you're skilled for it, but these are cheap ones. Um, they also help with your training, speeds it up a little bit. So again, level 3 would be the bare minimum. And then also you add on these extra uh, little DPS uh, implants. So I have cruise missile, I have one for shields, one for guided missile precision, uh, target navigation, and rapid launch. Now you don't necessarily have to do shield management or uh, missile damage. Let's say your ship, you can't fit it. Let's say you don't have enough CPU. You could always throw in a CPU implant or a power grid implant, uh, depending on what you need. These are all just little added bonuses. Again, wherever you could add one skill or, or just two, three, four, five percent extra DPS, it helps tremendously. So one of the big things you guys were asking me about is actual ISK per hour. Now things have changed a little bit and I want to bring this up. This is what I have for my mission guide. If you look on the right hand side, these are the payouts for all the missions. These are actually down about 20 to 25 percent. Uh, it's just based on what the economy is doing right now in EVE Online, but figure if you run in the midst of dead space, I have it listed at 200, you actually make about 150, give or take, 
Um, I also do not factor in the LP. So that's something to keep in mind. So all these numbers are just based on uh, bounties for killing the rats and the salvage. I do run salvage on almost all of these. Uh, somebody also asked me, which ones are you blitzing? Anything under the 40 million mark, so from about here down, I run blitz. Uh, I will sometimes pick up items with the Marauder that I'm flying right now. It actually has a built-in tractor beam, and it's really easy to salvage as I'm fighting along in these missions. So, uh, But, like I said, Blitz, anything under 40 million, and try to stick with these missions up top. These are the ones that pay out the most. Another thing I wanted to talk about is the actual missions that I'm running. So I'm running them with three different agents. Why I really like this pocket by Dodixie is because there are three agents that I can run the level four missions. There's one right here, one right here, one right here. And then there's also the clone bay right over here. Uh, this middle pocket I tend not to go in, but as I'm declining the missions, let's say I get one bad one that I just really don't want to run, and I have that four hour timer, I will hop over another system. Or if I take a mission in this system that sends me to this other one, I will stop at this agent and I'm running these three different agents. Gives you much more variety for missions that you're running. And also I wanted to note that I'm now running the burner missions. I'm not running all of them. I'm starting to put up guides and videos as I go along, but uh, I have quite a few up right now. There's just a few that I can't do or I'm just trying to work on a cheaper fit than what's out there. I now have a full fleet. If we go over here and look at my personal assets, I have a fleet of ships. If I go to my hangar that are all meant for burner. So this ship, this ship, this ship, all these ships, these are all just for running the burner missions. Uh, they don't, you don't necessarily have to have four different mission uh, ships for each mission. You could actually just swap out a lot of the parts. They're mostly interchangeable, but it's just easier for me just to hop in the ship if I get the mission, make active, go and do the, the mission. Now burner missions generally send you out about three to four jumps. Um, they are done in cruisers are, are smaller. So that's a really nice thing. The daredevils tend to be a little expensive, but these uh, these little kestrels right here are super cheap. Uh, to run the base missions, it's definitely going to get more expensive. This burner Talos, uh, we're talking, if we hover over this thing, uh, let's simulate the fit. We're talking about 500 million, but it makes the mission really, really easy. It does give you a good chance of faction loot. Uh, the funny thing is, as I was testing all these different fits out on the uh, test server, I was getting great drops. But uh, as I've been running these missions, uh, I haven't really got anything too great. I got about 22 million isk and uh, just random things. But these burners do have a chance of dropping faction loot. They also, they're really super easy to do. Uh, they do not take that long, and they give a ton of bonus LP. So I'm still working on my burner mission guide. I'll bring this over for you. Once this is all ready, I will get this posted, but I'm starting to put the videos up uh, as I go along and get them done. My ultimate goal is to go through everybody's uh, fits that are running these and just take a look and see if I can make them a little bit better, a little bit cheaper. I have to give a huge shout out to a guy named Hateless Gaming. If you're doing level 4 missions and haven't seen his Twitch, uh, he is unbelievable. He'll sometimes run 3, 4, 5 clients at a time. Um, just without his head even looking at the mission and, and he's, he's an absolute beast at running these. A lot of his, uh, fits are, are the same as what I have. Uh, the big changes I have are mainly down for the team burners. I found a way to run these in Kestrels. So these are super, super easy to do in my Kestrel fits and my Kestrel fits are also super cheap. We're talking, uh, less than 20 million isk. There's this stupid little piece to these ships that, that's somewhat expensive, but uh, uh, these are really, really fun, really easy, really quick to do. Uh, some of these other ones, it, it depends, these pirate burners, some are more, uh, more difficult than others. Um, there's one that's really, really hard. For example, this, uh, this blood agent, uh, he's real difficult, but these other ones are mainly just set it and forget it, you know, burn at them, turn, overheat your guns and, and do your thing. Uh, 
Now the bases I'm, I'm working on as well. The problem is you can't do these cheaply. Uh, the one that I've been doing mostly is the Burner Talos. I'm using Hateless, uh, using his fit. This is a very, very easy one to do. Uh, this ship costs about 500 million isk, but uh, this is the one actually where I've gotten the most loot from. When I was on the test server, um, I think it dropped a couple blueprints worth like 200, 300 million. Uh, these are mainly, they're almost like a blitz mission. They're meant to be done really quick. You make a ton of LP. I think I'm making about over 7,000 LP per uh, per mission. Also, the ships that you're killing have huge bounties on them with the added chance to drop faction loot. Might as well do them. Uh, in my old guide, I said I was skipping them. That, that was a mistake. These are definitely, definitely doable if you have a little bit of isk to throw at the problem. So the last thing I want to talk about is the different ships that you could use for running these level 4 missions. Uh, a lot of people have been saying, hey, I'm a new player. Can I use something like a battle cruiser for running these missions? I'm going to say it's 100% possible. So you could run something like a Brutix Navy issue. Um, is it going to be the most efficient? Absolutely not. Um, if you want to take about an hour to two to run these missions, you definitely run them in battle cruisers. But I would absolutely not suggest it. Uh, for whatever reason, these uh, battle cruisers have sort of been neglected by CCP. Uh, they really just don't have a good fit into much of the game. So I would say try to stay away from the battle cruisers if you can. Uh, the better option would be. I would say go with this pirate ship, the, the Gila. The Gila is kind of the be-all, end-all of ratting. Um, this is the number one ratting ship in the game. It is sort of expensive, but uh, once you get it fitted up, this thing's pretty uh, a formidable uh, uh, level four mission runner. You do have to kind of be a little bit safe and know what you're doing, and you also got to have good drone skills, but once you get all that stuff up, this thing is an absolute beast. Now, the other option would be... Uh, if you go to the Galante ships, there's another drone ship. It's called the Ishtar. This is the one I have the fitting for in my guide. Uh, the Ishtar is, I think, a little more powerful and a little bit better at running these level 4 missions. Uh, the big thing is it can fit the assault damage control. Now, in my guide, my old guide, uh, it was not running in ADC. So let me show you my new fitting real quick. Let's go to personal assets. And let's see, this is in Una. And we will simulate my Ishtar. So the things that have changed on my Ishtar is I'm no longer running the two guns up top. Um, it just, it, it they're, they're pointless. Uh, they sometimes could take out frigates, but they're literally only for drawing aggro. So what now, What I have now is this uh, the civilian Gatling railgun. It does not require any ammo. It is strictly for just drawing aggro. So lock onto the target, fire at them, even though it doesn't hit them or do anything, uh, it gets them moving towards you. Uh, I did add a uh, auto-targeting system. Uh, I actually usually don't have it running. I just uh, keep it uh, keep it set just like this. Uh, lets me target a couple extra ships. And again, probe scanner usually offline unless I'm doing something. I have messed around. Um, you can run an afterburner, but I for running missions uh, prefer the micro warp drive a lot of people will say well well i would rather use the afterburner well feel free to use an afterburner i prefer to use the mwd that's just my play style uh the other thing i changed was i put uh adc on now this is an abyssal rolled adc adcs are really super cheap so uh the plasmids are a little more expensive but I happened to roll about, I think, 10 of them, and I got a, a pretty blingy uh, uh, assault damage control. So this gives you basically <laughs> invulnerability once this thing is running. So if, if you hop into a mission, you land on, on grid, and let's say you're taking a ton of DPS and your, uh, your shield booster can't keep up, pop this bad boy on. You can see the EHP when this thing is on. You can see the resist when this thing is on, uh, especially for uh, armor. This thing is an absolute beast with the assault damage control. And if I turn it off, you can see the, the numbers. They're pretty low. 25,000 EHP, nothing to, to shake your fist at. But again, turn on the ADC. Look how much that number goes up. Now, the bad thing about the ADC is it does have a cooldown. So I basically blip it on and off. Um, I will usually turn it on 
Uh, about a minute into the mission, once I see my shield chunking down about halfway, turn it on, let my shield reps catch up, make sure I get into a good position, and then I'll let it run its cycle. For whatever missions I'm running where I'm actually using it, I'll probably only use it once, maybe twice. Uh, the Ishtar, again, very, very good ship. Uh, the Gila, again, very good ship as well. It's up to your play style. Another good thing about the Gila is if you're going to be running combat sites all over New Eden, it's really good for running high sub combat sites. Whereas the Ishtar, not so much. It's a little harder to get into certain sites. So I'd say definitely go with the Gila. But both are great ships. So the last ship I want to talk about is going to be my end game ship. It's the Marauder. Uh, it's the Golem, the Caldari Tier 2 battleship. And let's pull this bad boy up. Let's go to my assets and Una. And wait till you see this thing. Um, I wound up selling my two rattlesnakes to pay for this. I, I got kind of tired of flying two different ships and having a bounce between the two. And I'm like, well, let's try the Golem up. Uh, I went onto the test server and I popped this in and I looked at the DPS and I'm like, hey, like this doesn't even come close. Uh, only a thousand DPS. Why is this doing less than my rattlesnake, which does about 1500? Uh, I actually fit this shit up on the test server, ran a couple missions, and this thing is an absolute monster. Uh, you can't always go based off the DPS or the alpha that you send out. It's how the ship applies. If you look at the ship info, this thing has a built-in bonus to the target painters. So as you start skilling into Marauders, uh, the more target painters you put on, the better they're going to do. Now I did try to fit the ship a couple different ways. Uh, this has been the best fit that I could find. You could always tweak it based on your skills. This thing is super, super blinged out. As you can see, 3.2 billion-esque. Costs more than a dread, but this makes t level 4 missions an absolute snooze fest. You just hop in uh, and, and just start popping battleships. It could usually 3-shot any battleship that you're going to come across. Also, it could use any of the missiles. So unlike the Rattlesnake, where it's restricted to thermal and kinetic, this thing could go with any of the resistance for based on the mission that you're running. So a real quick uh, overview of what I'm running. I'm running the uh, Warhead uh, Catalyst, the two. Another Catalyst, two. These things are sort of expensive, but adds that little bit of DPS. Running the standard uh, Cruise Missile Launcher 2s. And then I will fit whatever missiles I'm going to need based on uh, what mission I'm running. Most of the missions that I'm running in this area are going to be EM. So that's the, the main DPS that I've been using. Now I run two of the tractor beams. The great thing about this ship is you do not need to run a fleet of uh, salvage ships. This can't think it's salvage at the same time that you're running the missions. That's its huge, huge bonus. Um, I do run a NOS. You do not need to run this. If you're going to take this off, you could actually uh, fit another tractor beam, have three of them. So you could be tractoring in four things at a time. So with an MTU out, which is awesome. And then you just pop your salvage drones out, just let them do their thing. So this is just for safety. I was more so uh, had it for testing, but I kept it on. Um, now, the only problem is uh, you got to be really low cap if you're going to actually be using it. This thing is uh, so close to being uh, cap stable that uh, I rarely ever use this. I think on, on maybe one or two missions, I'll turn it off uh, once or twice, but... It's nice to have just as a little safety net. Now, the thing about the Marauders is they run the Bastion module. And when you activate your Bastion module, you could see uh, this thing basically puts you into like a mini siege mode. Your uh, EHP goes up. Uh, let's pull up the information. It gives all sorts of bonuses. Now, one thing is when this thing is on, you cannot be moving. Velocity minus 100%. But you could see your sh uh, shield boost 100%. Uh, sensor dampener, this is all great because uh, all those little tiny frigates that are scramming you and doing all that, that nonsense to you, they, they can't actually activate them. So when you're in this bastion mode, uh, they, they basically just hover around you. They don't do anything. It's great. And also I'm running an afterburner. You could swap this out for, uh, for a micro jump drive, but uh, I like this pimped out uh, afterburner. It's good for getting around missions. You can see the speed. 
Uh, not exactly the fastest thing in the world, but uh, let me turn that off. Yeah, this thing, uh, yeah, it's not too bad. Just shy of 400. It gets you to, to where you got to go. The only time it kind of stinks is when you have those gates that are about 36 km out. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll line to the gate, I'll activate this, and then um, I'll let the ships chunk away at my shield. And then once I look like I'm getting into some danger, I'll hit the bastion mode, turn the AB off, kind of finish, clean up the mission, clean up the salvage, and take the gate. You just got to kind of work it. Uh, you'll you'll start, start to learn when you can turn the bastion module on and off. The only thing dangerous dangerous about the bastion module is let's say you're getting hit really really hard by a bunch of ships and you got to warp out well you cannot if you have this online so you got to be really really careful it has a pretty long cycle so if if you think you're running into trouble make sure you turn it off make sure you're aligned and uh, ready to warp out now again like i was saying i've, I've tried different fittings but i'm running three of these uh, blinged out uh, target painters this ship gets its bonus um, to target painters. So when you look at this actual number, uh, this 1,000 DPS, it's it's really about how this ship applies that DPS. This thing nukes battleships. It can three-shot any battleship. It can basically one-shot any cruisers. Uh, and then it also is pretty darn good at taking out frigates. Uh, frigates, believe it or not, sometimes take three to four shots. It all depends on what frigate. Uh, that's kind of the funny thing about this ship. But uh, just running uh, your standard uh, shield hardeners, these are blinged out. Um, I'm running a blinged out uh, XL shield booster. And let's see if I activate this. You can see how much actual shield HP this thing is giving me. Almost 2,000 per 4 seconds. Uh, you just got to blip this thing on and off. This thing is an absolute beast mode. Um, the actual shield hit points is kind of low. So you just blip it on and off as you need. Um, you, could try to, you try to blip it on and off when you have uh, the Bastion module activated. But you don't necessarily have to. Uh, you just got to keep an eye on your cap if you're going to be running this without uh, the Bastion module on. And as for my lows, I'm just running blinged out Caldari Navy Ballistic uh, Control Systems. Now it does give you the warning for uh, the diminished returns because I'm running four of them. But you can see if I take one away, how much actual DPS. Um, we're talking about 50 DPS, so I just run four of them. There's really nothing else better that you could uh, put in the low slots. And in terms of my drones, I am running just your standard run-of-the-mill uh, Tier 2 uh, light drones. I have a set of the kinetic, set of the thermal, and set of the salvage. One thing I'm going to warn you, though, is if you're in the Bastion, uh, if you have this uh, activated, the drones, for whatever reason, will swap to your light drones. Uh, it's I don't know if it's necessarily a bug, but... If you blip this on and off, it will switch aggro to your drones. So I do lose a lot more drones running these missions. Um, you just got to kind of keep an eye out on it. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll take out the frigates first. And uh, once all the frigates are gone, um, I can basically throw my salvage drones out and just set it and forget it. Let them, uh, let them deal with whatever my MTU and whatever my uh, tractor beams are picking up. So... This is the end-all, be-all Marauder. Super blinged out, 3.2 billion isk. It's not for everybody, but this can run any of the missions very easily. No need to have a Noctis. No need to have to go back, dock up, bring out the Noctis, bring out the Catalyst salvage ship, whatever ship you're using to salvage. It does it all in one. Uh, you get... Just sit and park next to your MTU so you don't have to worry about MTU hunters. That is another great thing. This is a beast of a ship if you could afford it. So I just wanted to thank everybody for just being so awesome. Uh, my first video was my most watched as well as my most liked video that I've ever put out. Uh, I really, really do enjoy doing this, helping out new players. Now, one thing I really want to... to uh, 
express to people is this is not the be all end all for uh, what you should fly, what you should do, what you should skill into, uh, how you should enjoy the game. This is just what has worked for me. I've tried a lot of different fits, a lot of different things. This is what I find to be the most fun. Uh, it's very, very efficient, not necessarily the most efficient, but it's what I like to do. It has also fueled my other passions for the game. So all the ISK that I make uh, fuels my PvP funds. Um, I'm getting to fly with a lot of great groups of people. So Spectre Fleet, Bomber's Bar, uh, Bjorn B, uh, my, current, uh, my current corporation that I'm in, Bootstrap Mining. We also do a lot of operations. It, it gives me that chance to go out and just have a lot of fun in this game. Now... Uh, I do get burned out like everybody else, and I do think it is uh, a very good idea to, to take breaks from the game. So um, do what you like, do what you love in the game. Try different things. Let's say mission running is getting kind of boring for you. Try mining, try PvP, maybe uh, get in on the giant World War B2. Uh, go blap some keep stars and, and get some battleships blown up. Uh, Again, I'd like to thank everybody for, for being so awesome. If you got any questions, comments, concerns, uh, you can leave them below. Also, if you want, you could send me a message in-game. My name is The Cowbell. It's all one word. I try to get back to everybody uh, as soon as I can, usually within a day. So if you got anything, you got any uh, pressing issues, if you want to send me a fit, uh, go ahead, sling it over to my mailbox, and, and I'll take a look for you. Thanks again, everybody, and have a good one. Fly safe.